Easter, everyone. Thank you. Let's go right to the call to worship. Here we go. Butterflies, spring bulbs, chirping birds, calves, lambs, and empty tombs are all signs of Easter. We come to celebrate new life among us. The amazing has happened. Christ is risen. A miracle has happened. Christ is risen. Our gathering scripture is John 20, 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple sat out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and went towards the tomb and reached the tomb first. He went down to look at it and saw that the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrapping, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, for he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabini, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Let us stand and sing our traditional Easter hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Thank you. 
our journey of faith has brought us to this place. Death is vanquished, Christ is known. The living one is in our midst, now and forevermore. We have journeyed through the shadows. Friends, here is the light. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. So we light the Christ candle today, inviting the light of Christ into the sanctuary, into our hearts and into our minds. We're going to do something new, while well, it's new to you at Grace today. We're gonna to change this barren wooden cross into a flowering cross of beauty. And you're all gonna take part in that. So we have two hymns that we're going to sing and I'm going to invite you to come up this aisle, uh, take a flower, and put it on the cross, and then down this aisle. I want everybody to be involved, and we'll just keep going until we run out of flowers. Okay? Let's sing.
everybody. Let's join together in this Easter prayer. God of resurrection, you have rolled the stone away and the tomb of our world has been opened wide. With the dawn has come a new creation that our celebration today empty our tombs, renew our lives, and release your power. Through the risen Christ we pray, amen. We're going to hear now from the moderator of the United Church, Reverend Carmen Lansdowne. Uh, it's the first female indigenous leader of the United Church, and I thought it might be good for us to get to know her a little bit and to hear her Easter message. Hello, I'm the Right Reverend Dr. Carmen Lansdowne, moderator of the United Church of Canada. For the past several months, I've been thinking a lot about the nature of life and work in the church. Specifically, I've been thinking about the bad news story of churches being in decline, with the United Church leading that trend in Canada. The financial sustainability of the church is in question, the number of volunteers is dwindling. Even at the national church level, we have committee vacancies that go unfilled. The church feels like it might be in crisis to some. The church definitely feels in crisis to others. But this is not a new story. If you think back through the ages to this crisis that Mary Magdalene was having in the Easter story, the whole world of the community of Jesus had been thrown into a real crisis that looked like it had no possibility of resolution. Jesus was crucified for the ways he questioned the status quo, the imperial order of the world under the Romans. Through parable and prophecy, healing and prayer, Jesus confronted the way things were and asked the world to consider a different way, a way focused on discerning God's will for humanity. This world trusted that God wanted us to know that we were and are beloved, which is all well and good when Jesus was alive, but then what? For centuries, for millennia, we have continued to turn to the scriptures to look for guidance in our faith and our lives and the life of the church. The Easter story is not a story of peace and benign hope. It is a story of disruption and grief, disbelief and uncertainty. And in the midst of it all, Jesus still shows up to Mary Magdalene, calls her by name and says, but I am still here. And you cannot hold on to the me that you think you know. Go and tell the others. We are well practiced in the United Church at Daring Justice about using the Jesus story to justify where we believe others need to turn around and repent to bring about God's justice in the world. But what about our claims to deep spirituality and bold discipleship? We don't see or hear or talk about those things much. The church is filled with God's faithful people, yes, but what does that mean in terms of how we form each other as disciples of the Jesus story? This is the message that I hope for the church, that we will hear Jesus calling us into deeper spirituality and bold discipleship, that in the uncertainty of our so-called decline, that we need to remember that our faith calls us to believe in a God that shows up and acts in the world, to know that even in our grief, the risen Christ will show up and call us by name and remind us that this is not the end of our story. What does it mean to come from a religious tradition of faith that has very rarely not been in crisis and for 2,000 years has continued to choose faith, hope, and love through it all? This year for Easter, my prayer for the church is also the prayer of Martin Luther King Jr that we remember that discipleship means coming together in the ways and teachings of Jesus to believe in a way when there is no way, not only in the seeking of daring justice, but also in our formation as disciples of the Christ story. May it be so. Amen.
Thank you. I'd like to invite the children to join me. sit on the floor too if you want. I'd like you to be able to see these pictures. That right, cool. Have we got everybody? Here, here we go. So this is a pretty special day, right? So I wanted to just take a few minutes and go through the whole, the Easter story with you, just so that you understand what's happening today. So remember last Sunday, we called it Palm Sunday? Who was here last Sunday? You were here, but yeah. Remember we walked around and waved all the palms? Well, that was a special day. Jesus came into Jerusalem that day, and everybody waved palms because they were so happy to see him. And after that, hi. Jesus went, Jesus had uh, 12 special people in his life, the closest friends that he had, and he went and had supper with them. And we did that last Sunday too. We called it communion. And he, he took some bread and shared it with his friends. And then he took a cup of wine. We use grape juice, but he used wine shared that with his friends, and said whenever they ate that bread and had that wine, it was to remember him. So we do that for the same reason. And then after that supper that night, he went to a special place, a garden called Gethsemane, and he went there to pray. But while he was there with his disciples, his friends, some soldiers came and arrested him. And they, they arrest, see the soldiers here taking Jesus? They arrested him because people had told lies about Jesus and said that he wanted to be a king. And really, Jesus just wanted to love people and care about people. But they were afraid that he was getting too much power. So they had him arrested. And he went before the governor, and he was charged with whatever crimes they had made up. And so they decided that he had to be, that he had to die. And so they did it in a very cruel way with a cross. And see, this is him carrying his cross up the hill to Golgotha, it's called. A cross similar to the one that we have. And sadly, on that cross, Jesus died that day. And that's the day that we call Good Friday in our church year. It was a very, very sad day. And so after he had passed away, his friends took him to a tomb. And we think it's like a, like a cave, sort of. Yeah, big hole. And then a stone was rolled uh, to close off the entrance to it. And so for three days, his friends were very sad. But on the third morning, and that's the morning like today that we call Easter morning, Mary, one of his dear friends, went and see the stone is rolled away, and she found that the tomb was empty. Only person in it was an angel. Jesus was gone. And while she was there, she was crying, she was sad. And she saw someone standing in the garden. And she said, where have they put my dear friend Jesus? And she, the man said, Mary. He said her name. And then she knew it was Jesus. So Jesus was alive again. And so that's why we're so happy on Easter morning. 
It's hope that all of us have that when we die, we will live again in a different place, but we'll live again and see all the people that we love. So that's a great story. That's one we share today and celebrate today. So we're going to do a little uh, jump for joy rap. I need your help with this one. Everybody's help, actually. Here we go. Can you snap your fingers? Try. Yeah. So I'll say a line, and then you say it after me, OK? Are we ready? Jump for joy. Easter day. That big stone got rolled away. Jesus Christ lives again. Hallelujah and amen. How's the snapping going? Good? Jump for joy. Big surprise. I just can't believe my eyes. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ lives again. Lives again. Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah and amen. Okay, now we're going to switch to clapping. Keep the beat though. Here we go. Jump for joy. Sing and shout. Clap your hands, the news is out. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ lives again. Lives again. Hallelujah, and Hallelujah and amen. All right, give yourselves a hand. Well done. <laughs> Good job. Okay, we're going to sing our children's hymn. And let's get the instruments. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, any time, Marilyn. And we really make some noise together. Sunday school today, but Carol has some activity sheets for you right there. Yeah, thank you, Cole. Thanks. Thanks, Austin.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our comforter and our friend. Amen. Well, in the United Church of Canada, our new creed says, we are called to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen. And this affirmation continues, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. So that means that we expect our life-giving relationship with God and with one another in this world to carry on into the next world. If you're a reader of Broadview magazine, you may have seen Sarah Bessie's article called Easter Moments. And I'm gonna quote a bit from that. She said, I once dreamed of a big God with big plans, but now I've learned to embrace the resurrections of everyday life. Sometimes resurrection is like being in love for the first time or for a beautiful long time. Sometimes it looks like good food with good friends telling stories and laughing until they lay their head down on the table and start wheezing. Sometimes it looks like a therapist's office and a box of tissues and learning to speak the truth about your own life. Sometimes it looks like church. Sometimes like wilderness. Sometimes like a mountain and sometimes like an ocean. Or you can find resurrection rocking a baby. Or at a hospice setting, quietly humming, it is well with my soul, under your breath while you say goodbye. So resurrection, Jesus alive three days later. Are you able to explain this in a rational, logical way? Me neither. Do we need to explain resurrection in a rational and logical way? Or can we just sit with our unknowing? Can we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, to not know all the answers, to not be in the know? And what about us as individuals? Is there some part of us that needs to be resurrected? Maybe you've been going through some personal darkness for whatever reason that only you know about. Is it time to let something go? Is it time to move on? In order to move on, you need to be a verb. In other words, take some action. Talk, negotiate, apologize, forgive, cry, pray. Whatever you need to do to move on, to move the stone away. I've probably told you before that my favorite preacher is Barbara Brown Taylor. And uh, she's a wonderful author. I, I think I have all of her books. So I want to quote a little bit today from her book called Learning to Walk in the Dark. Barbara says, the cave in which Jesus rose from the dead is long gone. It's covered over by the huge Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. Today, visitors stand in line to enter a mausoleum that looks nothing like a hole in the ground. This may be just as well, since no one knows for sure what happened there. By all accounts, a stone blocked the entrance to the cave so that there were no witnesses to the resurrection. Everyone who saw the risen Jesus saw him after it had happened. So whatever happened in the cave happened in the dark. She goes on, 
As many years as I've been listening to Easter sermons, I've never heard anyone talk about that part. Resurrection is always announced with Easter lilies, the sound of trumpets, bright streaming light, but it didn't happen that way. If it happened in a cave, it happened in complete silence and in complete darkness. With the smell of damp stone and dug earth in the air. So new life starts in the dark. And whether it's a seed in the ground, a baby in the womb, or Jesus in the tomb, it starts in the dark. Back to Sarah Bessie, she says, let us open up our hearts, my friends. Resurrection may be hiding in your life already. Look at all the ways that you're standing up and rising against all odds. And so today, let us all say and feel thanks for Jesus' resurrection. And may each one of us rise again and again and again. Amen. Okay now, <clears throat> welcome to worship on Easter morning at Grace United Church. Welcome to the people who will watch this later on camera. It's good to have all of you here. I see some of you were crazy enough to wear hats as well. I couldn't talk them into it. Two of the people wearing hats, one is my daughter, one is my, Laura is her name. Uh, and my granddaughter, Makili. Remember reading in the newsletter about Makili, the basketball all-star? There she is in the flesh. <laughs> Good to have you both here today. Yes, yeah, so welcome. It's a great day to be together. We'll gather after the service for a little time of fellowship. I don't really have announcements that need to be made today, I don't think. Does anyone have announcements? No, okay. So in terms of land acknowledgement, which we usually do at the start of the service, we're doing it now. And I wanted to, that's a picture of the First Nations version of the Bible. And of course we're thankful for the careful stewardship of this land that we're privileged to worship on. But I wanted to share that with you that it, back in 2021, a group of indigenous clergy scholars, church leaders and members published a new translation of the New Testament called the FMV, or the First Nations Version. And that was, the group was from across Canada and across the US and from all different First Nations. And they came together and translated the Bible in their way of storytelling. So I'll just give you an example of that. You heard Kathy read the, the scripture this morning. And the way they've put it is, well, if you've ever listened to indigenous stories or read indigenous books, you'll understand this. Early on the first day of the week, strong tears, that's Mary, came to the burial cave early in the morning while it was still dark. When she saw the stone had been removed from the burial cave, she ran to find stands on the rock, that's Peter, and he shows goodwill, which is John. The much loved follower of creator sets free, and that's Jesus. So all the characters are named in ways that describe them and who they are in the Bible and what their role was. So I just wanted to share that uh, with you, that that's something fairly new. And uh, there's much we can learn from our indigenous brothers and sisters. Thankful for all the many gifts that God gives to us. Let us share our offering this morning. Hallelujah. 
Let us pray. Loving God, we ask that you would accept these gifts. These gifts represent the love in our hearts and the work of our hands. May they be used to further your words in this community and around the world. Amen. Going to do a brief prayers of the people and when I say let us please finish the phrase with give thanks to God so let us give thanks to God okay let us pray for the life of Jesus which brings us new life let us give thanks to God for the death of Jesus which shatters the power of death let us give thanks to God. For the resurrection of Jesus, which brings us hope in all things, let us give thanks to God. For the life of this church and this church family, sharing the good, need, good news in word and deed, let us give thanks to God. For our new life in Christ, moving us to acts of resurrection, courage, and compassion. Let us give thanks to God for the blessings of family and friends. Let us give thanks to God. On this Easter day, let us lift our voices in thanksgiving as we say together, let us give thanks to God. Let us continue on in prayer as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Thine is the Glory.
Let us go out now into the, the rest of our day and into this week. Let us go thankfully and joyfully and with a daring love. And may all that we do be done in love. For we are the children of a loving God. May God bless us all. Amen. Oh, God still takes us at our word.